Hi there, Sean from the Velvet Attic here again. I just completed a video earlier on our brand new silk papers and how to apply them to chalk painted surfaces. And I would like to just show you how easy it is to actually apply a full wrap of the silk papers to your surfaces. So on large cupboards, um, if you want to continue the pattern and wrap a whole table, you can do that and how they work. So just to discuss with you, this little design here is actually the one I'm just going to demo on the board to explain, um, but it's from one of our tropical range in the Velvet Attics range. Um, we've got some lovely designs launching with the Petite Rouge stockers and um, product line. So I'll just give you an idea. They have some beautiful roses. What I do try and do is, or I do, is design everything seamless on four sides so when you try and wrap your item let's say you are now going to do the door of a huge armoire or cupboard or you want to fill a table um, you can buy multiple sheets you can line them up these two sides they'll all match line up and you can continue with the pattern along your surface um, I think that makes it a little bit more user-friendly um, from the point of view that you don't have to cut off wastage and then try and join up patterns halfway through a piece of paper. So with our silk papers, very lightweight paper, smooth on the back, lovely texture on the front. They are called silk papers and yet they are not made from silk. But carrying on, if you have a look at some of these designs, the beauty of the paper is the opacity. You have coverage. You can put these over dark black, no problem it's not going to come through you're going to keep your colors and i think that's the really really exciting part of the the range that we've brought out in the product this here i managed to get myself upside down is the french 12 from the petit rouge range this is the more um open one we have one that's a little bit more concentrated with images once again seamless uh, can carry on what you can do, which is really nice, you can slice them off and join them, and you will see a bit of a join line, but you can also fuzz out your edges with water, which I showed in the previous uh, video, and that will hide some of the join lines. But I'm going to also show you, for example, this mono ephemera design that I've done. I do do some designs where it's not repeatable, like this, yet you could place them next to each other and cover a whole table and that still look just as stunning. So moving on from there, I'm going to also show you, like I did in the previous, we have an application film that we use to apply our silk paper to our surfaces. It'll come in an A3 size in, the, in a different pack to your silk paper, you buy it separately. If you use this technique, you will have a perfect application with no creases because this helps you apply it and that's what I would like to show you with a full wrap. Using the same design I used on the CD box, I full wrapped the CD box sides. Um, I never continued the pattern purely from a time restraint, I had to get things done quickly, um, but just to show you that you can full wrap an item it can look stunning, you can display stuff in it, put stuff in it, put in your bathroom, toiletries, whatever works for you. Now, to apply this paper, what we do is I have a pre-painted MDF board here with Velvet Attic Black Chalk Paint, Noir Chevalier, and, but you can use any chalk paint or acrylic paint as your base to your surface. I'm then going to take my plastic film applicator and I would have my size sheet or my pre-cut size to the side of my box that paper needs to be pre-cut to the size you need make sure your film is big enough to apply it with so I'm going to place it face down on the plastic sheet let me just move this board for a second so you can see what I'm doing I'm trying to stay within my little margins here of video okay so we place it upside down I'm taking some water in a spritzer bottle. I use distilled water. I've done it with tap water. It's fine. 
You don't have to have the spritzer bottle, you could just have a big brush and put water on as you go. I just prefer to use a spritzer bottle. So I'm going to spritzer water onto my piece of paper on the film. I'm going to saturate it with water. So it's just going to soak through. The paper we sell is an amazing quality which gives you a lot of time sorry a lot of time to um, work with it it doesn't break down I'm going to use the wet brush now and I'm just going to make sure everything is coated wet and just make sure there's no if you've got a fold or a crease it's going to happen it's going to apply that fold or crease when you put it down so you really need to do need to um, just make sure it's smooth then what we do is we take our board back let me just move that one side quickly just don't mind my little blue tape it helps me center everything for this camera so we take our blue tape I have blue tape <laughs> you forgive me for the late hours <laughs> we take our board and I'm going to use velvet attic paper glue um, I prefer to use the velvet attic paper glue as previously mentioned in my video due to the fact that when it dries I have a lovely matte finish I can do uh, watercolor effects over my papers, glazing, those sort of techniques. So before I apply my paper I'm going to take this. You can use your varnishes, your water-based varnishes, there's no problem, I've done them with the varnishes. Um, you would do it in the same process and technique that I'm doing now. So we got to visualize this is the side of our little box. I'm going to now put the glue down onto the side. Make sure you cover enough area to fit your piece of paper on or cover the whole side if you were doing the whole side here. Like I said, this technique you won't have any creases. You then take your plastic, your film, you place it over where your glue is and you can place it on the side of your box for example you then push it down with your hands the film will add a little bit of protection for your paper although it is hardy it will not fall apart and then those of us that do things like this often or crafters we have rollers or brayers i'm going to just roll from my center out Make sure it's all down. And then I'm going to pull off gently on the side, like that. What I do do to preserve the film, I'm going to show you so that you can reuse them, is to take your spritzer, because remember we had some glue on that surface, so we just need to spritz the water on. Take our cloth or paper towel and just wipe that wet glue varnish whatever product you're using off there you can see the film is actually quite hardy too you'll be able to reuse it over and over and over hence why we sell it separately to in the pack with the salt paper so i'm going to bring our board back here is the board as you can see it you see it goes a little bit transparent which is quite normal as it dries your opacity will come back then I take the glue again and I'm going to work over the top of my paper. Make sure it's all covered, coming in from all edges. I'm using a soft synthetic nylon brush. You don't need an expensive brush, you can use a cheap as long as it's a nice soft brush. Hardware brushes will be a bit too coarse for this. And that's where we are. So what's going to happen now is I'm actually going to just quickly let this dry off and then I'll be back in a couple of minutes to show you what the next stages are. Okay, so we're back now and our piece of silk paper that we put down has dried. As you can see, all that colors come back. 
Now, what I do when I full wrap, basically because of the edges involved around boxes and that sort of thing, I like to make sure that that glue has definitely penetrated through um, on the full wrap. So, I like to take my fingers um, basically because I can apply the pressure I need. I pick up some glue and pushing down with some pressure I just push that glue just over the edges. You'll see it'll become a little transparent again. Bring some of that glue back and I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing down with pressure working that glue in a circular motion all along the edge there so I would do this each, each side of my box I'd lay down the papers as each one's dried I actually go around and then I come back and do each side like this working round and round and just we could make sure it goes in there like so and once you are happy that you've pushed enough pressure all the way around I just smooth off a little bit of water you can do that with your um, varnish if you're not using the glue and just work it down a bit and then I'm just going to go and get my damp large brush wipe off some of the excess and then this is going to be allowed to dry once this dries because this will dry quite quickly um, then you can start applying your varnishes or your glazes um, or whatever techniques you're going to be using um, the first time it dried to give you an idea with our summers we have very hot summers so um, you'll find that that first application when you put it down is actually going to dry within 15-20 minutes uh, winter time we're looking at about 25 minutes but as soon as your colors back you can continue for this video I actually took my hair dryer <laughs> I had it on a low setting, not too hot, just a nice sort of warm setting and I blow dried that quickly uh, just so I could carry on with the video but you could of course do this on your box or tray or whatever you're busy with at the time. And then yes, the minute it's dried, full wrap, colour comes back, you'll see it's not as transparent as the first time we did it, um, but there's a little bit which will come back um, to full colour once it's dried and um, if you have any questions please feel free to contact us at the Velvet Attic um, alternatively have a look pop into our stockers get some of these silk sheets I'm sure you're gonna love them as much as I'm enjoying using them thanks very much till next time <laughs>